Okay, we're back with the second presentation. We've got Worldcom 75 presenting. We've got Emily Arrow and Kate Seacourt speaking for that. Mike, he's at. Hi. Hi, Hi Emily. Hello. Good. Hey, do you right? Thank you. Good stay. Yeah. Um, Hi, so as many of you will know, about two weeks ago, um, our coach, Chris will have um, stepped down. So our remaining uh, chair is our chair, Jorka Halme. He could not be here with us today on account of uh, spending this week and role playing in an undisclosed location in or near Helsinki, on which I can't really say anything more than that. <laughs> or, um, but yeah, so here we are. So. That's roughly our situation at the moment. We are adjusting to this change, and we are still internally adjusting to that. Um, hence our lack of preparation for this that we would have wished we were able to do. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, I am a person to ask, but I've also got Kate here. I'm the moral support. Yeah, and looking prettier than I. And down under we have Perky. Uh, for staff services at DH. I hope he heard this. I don't know. Yeah, okay, good nodding. Indeed. Um, but yeah, overall, Worldcon 75 is doing actually really well internally for the stuff for actually building a convention. We managed to, um, I'm not sure if we've got this out in public yet, but our academic track is now set. We have 58 presentations done by people from 10 different countries. Our um, dealer registration page form on the website should have gone up just recently. And um, I'm probably forgetting something. But in any case, um, don't really have much more than that. I kind of suspect we may have be, be facing some questions here, so we have to go on to that. Okay. I think you'll recognize many of these questions from the previous presentation, but um, we aren't going to ask you about Zika, so you can <laughs> relax. No uh, <laughs> um, So, uh, how about the family membership situation? Do you have a family membership rate, and would it include childcare, and if so, how much childcare? Family membership rate, yes, we have one. If I remember right, it's a 15% discount, could be 10 I'm sorry, I just don't remember that number off the top of my head. It's on the website. It's on the website. Okay. And, uh, we are working on childcare. Childcare is still in progress. We don't know the exact way we're going to sort it, so we don't have an exact price yet. Okay. Sure, we're going to go with the labor question. You know, any labor costs that are going to affect you with moving in, moving out, forklifts, any of that kind of requirement? No such union-type requirements in Finland. Um, any build that we do that is done by the, um, by the company uh, closely associated with the convention center gets built on their time so we don't have to pay for it, but otherwise we can do anything. Any rigging needs to be done by the local group. Okay. And you've budgeted those costs and they're within line? Oh, yeah. yeah. Are there exclusive providers? for uh, rigging, drainage, internet, AV, or other services? What do they provide? Um, do you have any contractual requirements that would prevent you from using other, other providers? And are their charges reasonable and budgeted? For rigging, I think I just also that. Drainage, was that? Drainage. Drainage. Moving drainage. No requirements, but as I said, we get it cheaper if we get it from, we don't have to pay for the time if it's done by the local crew. For the internet connection, the um, the Mesogas goes upstream bandwidth is by default. It's a 10 gig connection, Wi-Fi connection, so that are free. We are internally working with getting sponsorship from one or two uh, telecom companies for getting that connection up to being 100 gig, if I remember right. We are closely connected with the crew that actually did the construction and design of the network internally in Mesocascos, which was designed for assembly, which is a Finnish demo scene event, which, by the way, happens a week before our convention. Um, yeah, we're covered. They have, basically, they, they run a LAN party of about 5,000 computers in that space a week before we get there. Oh, uh, this, I forgot to mention, two weeks before us is Ropecon, which is a Finnish role-playing convention, which is the largest European non-profit role-playing convention. And a week after the Helsinki Welcome, the um, 
our normal Helsinki festival week thing starts. So if you're thinking of extending your stay, there will be more than normal stuff to do before and after welcome. Yeah. And we'll continue with some of the nuts and bolts hardware. Electrical costs, and there's going to be extra electrical costs. No, much dealers better. and exhibits using electricity within the hall. I don't specifically remember. I think by default we figured in into the numbers into getting electricity everywhere. Where so it's part come. of the hall rental cost. Or? Um, it's when you as a dealer come in. My recollection is that that covers electricity at your table or space. We got a couple of questions asking about socializing and the party situation. Um, because the hotels are fairly widely separated, what provisions are you making to allow people to get together in the evenings? We are doing evening program stuff in um, and around Vessel Gaspos. Um, and the, the, the party space will be in Vessel Gaspos as well. So the hotels being spread out should not affect that part uh, of our activities. There are going to be, I think, some off-site things happening, partly in association with us during the event, during the evenings. And overall, it is a relatively small city, so you can move around. And even if you go to a restaurant in one part of it, it's not that difficult to get elsewhere. With the parties in the convention center, is there a designated provider for refreshments, or can people bring things in? Um, for non-alcohol products, it's relatively decent that there are very, very few restrictions on us. Um, alcohol is a tricky one for us in Finland, and it's particularly tricky for us because the legislation on this one is changing. Um, and exactly how that change will affect us is, is a little bit of a corner case and the exact schedule of when this legislation will come into force is going to be plus or minus three months from when Worldcon is. So it's a little bit difficult for us. We have plans and structures and backup plans for especially the, the, for us the worst case which is going with the current legislation. If anything, it's going to get easier, but we're going to make sure that people like James Bacon come out of this satisfied. <laughs> so if you have the Bacon rule, that gets met, I think you're in good shape. Or James Bacon is our default rule on this one, on what we need to get to you know, work. All right, we've got one here. It's a little bit multi-part, but uh, in Mid-American, your FAQ for the, the, bid, the convention, um, stated that hotel rates start at 80 euros. But when reservations opened up several weeks after that, it was clear there were not very many rooms at all at that price, and really the bulk were closer to 160. So, greater transparency is a way of uh, putting forth the information and whether there be changes and how that type of stuff would happen. So, here's the problem. And the reason that I'm taking this question is that I'm an American, so I get why this is a problem. Finnish conventions don't do hotel blocks the way that we do hotel blocks. Like, we have this understanding that the convention contracts with the hotel to guarantee a certain number of room nights, and in return, the hotel gives us a discount rate because, look, we're taking up rooms. This is completely confusing to all of the Finnish hotel chains, which is why our block situation has been a little funny. The truth of the matter is, there are hotels all over Helsinki at all kinds of rates. We don't have blocks. We don't care where we Right? So it, it does not affect the convention at all. So yes, the statement is there are hotels in Helsinki that are extremely cheap. There's actually a fairly nice hotel like a mile away that will rent you functionally a three bedroom dorm room and you can get as low as 20 euro a night with breakfast included. This is a pretty good deal. Um, the ones that we specifically booked with tend to be the kinds of hotels that do understand blocks because people kept asking us for blocks. So we made there be blocks. They are the larger chain hotels. They are running more expensive. We highly recommend that people go and look at a map and look at the transit map and consider their own ability to get themselves back and forth and how much fussing they want to do and how much they want to pay and book a hotel room somewhere where they think they're going to have an awesome hotel experience. So that is a, a problem of communication on our part, but this, the statements that have been made are true. 
Um, there is there has been some one of the things that we are currently dealing with is the way that things communicate versus the way that Americans expect them to communicate. And we understand that that has been a problem and we'll be attempting to bridge that gap or at least make explicit the existence of that gap to a larger degree moving forward. And does the commission plan to, through facilities, advertise things like the dorm room for 20 euros? Is that on the list of possibilities or? We do have on our roadmap of things to deal with the notion that maybe we should expand our list of hotels. I know of the existence of the Dorma Hotel because I went, wow, I'm feeling kind of poor. Let me go see what Google says about cheap hotels in Helsinki. Um, and, and quite often when you say to the Finns, no, but more hotels, and they sort of go, Google. So yes, we're working on it. There are lists. But because we're not locked into a block, we don't really care where you look. People find a hotel that makes you happy. Okay. The, um that's a good explanation for like the culture clash or the expectations that be different from country to country in the way the businesses operate. I think there's some feeling that the um, there was a certain degree of deception in not revealing how many rooms were available at a certain price, and I think the questioner's uh, intent is they're worried about just open communications going forward, and is there plans to be clear on that and just other topic points? Well, I think our plan is always to be clear. I, I, in my experience at this convention, nobody has actually set out to say, ha ha ha, I will tell lies and people will love us. Whether we succeed in that, I mean, we're humans. <coughs> we're communicating across several languages, across multiple cultures, across a zillion time zones. Um, poor Perky always shows up at our staff meetings. It's like four in the morning for him. So every once in a while he says something, and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And he says, it's four in the morning. Can you ask me again at a reasonable hour? Um, I think there have been some communication hiccups. Um, were they intentional? No. Are we going to try and fix them? Of course we are. Right? Everyone would like communications to be clear and open and comprehensible. Um, I think that it would, it would help if people would occasion, would cut us a little slack there. If we are trying to communicate clearly and if something doesn't make sense, come back and say, this doesn't make sense. You said this thing and it doesn't make sense and here's what I think you're trying to say and let us try again. You know, we're only Okay, we'll give you the, after being bad cop, I'll be good cop. Uh, what is the biggest hurdle your convention is currently facing and how can the community best help you over it? Our coach had stepped down two weeks ago. <laughs> um, we are currently in the process of figuring out exactly what the structure is going to be going forward. And it is going to be a structure that has yoga at the top of it and with a number of vice chairs underneath them. We are working on that now. The best thing we can get now is advice. Um, the particular part of the convention that we would actually probably like the most advice in it would be um, events, facilities, and, and finance. To be clear, we have people uh, taking care of these uh, divisions actively but they are also people who are not who don't have such a deep background in, in Worldcom. And other than that we're we are aware that we could really do with more staff. We could really do with more help. Um so the best way to to you know help us get forward would be to, to volunteer. And um Last question I have here at this time is um, Brexit. Do you see any impact um, in problems no. coming up? No. Okay. Anything else from the audience? Okay, we've well, got about one minute left, so if you'd like to finish up. Oops. I uh, sent you a question. Did you get it? Uh, <coughs> one of those could you ones. give me a hint about the topic? It, it, it was about shipping and, and, and transit from. Uh, for and specifically about exhibits and how we're going to get things from the U.S. to Finland. Okay, and I didn't make it up yeah. here. Are you? No, no. Okay. Have um, you're making any arrangements for shipping items between North America and Finland and back? And I think that probably means like history exhibits, any technical equipment, things like that. How it's going to be paid for? Yes, we're working on it. Um, 
we have a couple of people working on exactly how to make sure that we can do it with minimizing the costs and the um, import taxes and the VAT stuff. I, I'm sorry, I don't know the details of this one. I do know that we have a couple of people working on it. And I also know that we have, um, we're working on one of the providers at the convention center for being able to uh, receive shipments that are not convention shipments uh, pre-con. Can I follow up on that? Because sure, go ahead. I have been in, actually in contact with people and not been, been getting responses, so I appreciate it if you can follow up. But to get a, okay, car, so to, to, to get a carnet uh, to ship exhibits or artwork from the U.S. to Finland and, and to return anything that needs to be returned it, it is, is, is a process of several months, including the three months or so it takes to ship to get across each way. So it's fairly cri critical that this be dealt with soon. I agree. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, the stuff will arrive in September and it won't help us much. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. Okay, one more comment here. This is where we're... Yeah, comment, but we'll sort of turn it into a question. The earlier statement about cheap hotels and there's a range of prices that you can get for housing across the city and the fact that the city is relatively small and easy to get around with with transportation. However, there are people who like to stay in places where they're staying with fellow fans, so it's easier to meet the bar and come up with a critical mass of folks for fun and socializing. It, would facilities be able to target places and list, this is where folks are going? We do actually have hotel clubs. And if you, if you really want to be sure that you're in a hotel that is guaranteed to have other fans in it, book in one of the hotels with a block in it. Um, we strongly, uh, we are doing the party space in the Mesa Cascades, so it's less of an issue of if you're not in one of the main hotels, you're going to miss out on official parties. Um, unofficial groups, we have no control over. But yeah, if you want to be in a hotel where you're guaranteed to see fans breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there are hotels with blocks in them. And, you know, that's part of, I think, why people were asking us to do that. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. We're in the present.